has just been running a rampage across this game, it yeah. feels like. He is hitting so many of these cues non-stop. I've been playing with Nick for almost two years now. Pretty chill guy. Uh, likes playing League, likes anime. <laughs> Aqua was so critical this game, it felt like, for Echo Fox. Yeah. You know, he it felt like he just invalidated so much of the poke from Cloud9. I think his personality is kinda quiet. Yeah, he's like a little bit quiet. I think Nick's a little more reserved. He's, you know, he's pretty quiet. No paparazzi. <laughs> but I would say he's gone more like outgoing or like more like open, especially when like the longer we play with each other. He's definitely like, you know, started to talk more and just kind of uh, include himself a lot more, especially like in team discussions and in the game. Um, Nick's play style, I mean, he just likes to play a lot of like high execution champions. Uh, likes playing like Pike, likes playing Morgana. Uh, Thresh. Sven's gonna be chilling, smited, Lyra decides, okay, that's fine, we're just gonna go Ooh. for 50 and see that, but the hook comes through! And now both TSM bottom laners gonna be in some trouble. Sven, still trying to walk away from this one, but Apollo's got the damage, one more auto attack should do it! Can he find it? Oh, oh, Akuo, who rips the soul right out of him! He's on that playmaking thresh and he is making plays early. One of the things that is really noticeable about Hako compared to other supports is his ability to make plays and just to, just to be more mechanically skilled than some of the other supports. It's not necessarily to talk down on them, but I think that's just one of his biggest strengths and that's what sets him apart. And uh, like across the last couple of years, Hako has always been talked about as being one of these top three or four supports. Immediately I recognize that he's just, he like knows when to go in and he knows when we can like win the fight which is really good to have, and it's like a good trait to have, but sometimes it kind of backfires. So I'm the kind of guy who basically like holds him back, make sure that he doesn't do that, but like, you know, he's good enough where he like can win like a lot of the matchups just like through his own play. Nick has been really vital for our team for enabling both of our AD carries. Uh, without using Nick, we see a substantial difference in how the AD carries play and in their play styles, and while with Nick, there's never a point where you ever see them losing lane. They're always coming out even or ahead, and that's a real testament to Nick's ability as a support and to be able to create space and lane and just how he controls the lane as a whole. And I think seeing that is like really important in a player and how uh, it's been enabled us to at least even get to the point that we're at now, we're making playoffs last split. I don't think we would have made playoffs if it wasn't for Nick. So going into this weekend, we're playing against C9 and 100 Thieves, and for us to make playoffs at this point, we basically need to win out. Anything less than seven wins is going to be pretty hard. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining us. It's time for Game 4, which pits Echo Fox against Cloud9. We're going to jump into the players loading onto the Rift. Selecting the blue side is Echo Fox, and here is their lineup. Solo in the top lane, Mike Young in the jungle, Phoenix in mid, Apollo in bot lane, Hakuo at support with coaches Song and Tyler. We had the mindset of just getting revenge on our opponents because we're in a bad spot in terms of the standings and there's no real reason to like feel pressure on getting a playoffs because it's going to be hard no matter what uh, and so we just wanted to kind of take it one game at a time see just see what we can do, really. He's threatened to dive, but Mike Young is running straight up here. Phoenix has He's arrived. Coling, health bar is high enough. He's going to be okay right there. And now Paul's gonna stay alive, but Niski now flashless. Gangplay gonna set it up. They've already picked up one kill so far. Zazo's next up, and Niski will he be found? Looks like he's far enough away, but that's two nice kills now from across the map. Gangplay setting it up. Yeah, I mean, coming into the week, we were just trying to play how we've been playing in practice. Um, I think kind of like straight away from that, uh, the previous week, or maybe got in our heads a little bit about what level of performance we need to have. Um, the first week with Mike. The Vagar could look to combo with Blabber here. It's gonna come down to this smite. Sneaky as low gets away from the rest of this. No stun coming out. 2900 health. They're not willing to go for the combo. Head. Here comes the play. Picked up by the Jarvan. Blabber makes the play. And one kill's come out towards Sneaky though already. It's Blabber though who is low. Two kills in for Echo Fox. 5v3 on the map. They can go over any objective they want. Yeah, it's two for zero there for Echo Fox. They could potentially try to end the game. They can march it down mid lane. We'll see if they're gonna try to go for it or if they wanna take the Baron. I think the C9 game in general, we all played really well we I mean it's still kind of sloppy but we I think I think we played to what we wanted to play for right just like played as a team made our own plans even though we were behind for a good portion of the game we like we're still like talking with each other we're still like thinking about what we need to do Elder Dragon now alive Ooh. Solo is mid lane mind you remember Solo is not with the team so if he is too far split up 
Echo Fox, good getting really good poke. Off. And Phoenix actually loses the pack to this one. They got to bring Solo back. This could be good for Cloud9 right now. But the Ocean Dragons are kicking in and they're healing up so with the Yumi. It's going to be down to the smite again, Freak. Down to the smite, down a true shot, Bryce. And the estimate across, look at the damage to the front line. Mike can be found out, losing the Guardian Angel. Now the front line also is Blatter. Stone play pop. He will fall though. One in for Phoenix. Apollo, look at the Kaido A sneaky. Two more autos, finds the kill, but traded back by Niski. Look at the scoreboard though. It is three for C9 and four alive for Echo Fox. Echo Fox are pinging towards the Cloud9 base. They're going to try to surround them. Right. We never really got a full on wipe from either side until around the Elder Dragon times. And once we got there, it was like a couple people would die and we'd get Elder, but nothing would really happen. And then it took all the way to the third Elder before um, we saw a really good fight from our end where it looked kind of off at first, but Apollo was able to kill Sneaky in the back line and we were able to zone the Vigar off and then everything just kind of worked in our favor. A single Q might kill him, exhaust is in, buys a bit of space, but they're gonna kill the mid laner. They're gonna find the kills. Down goes Zazel, down goes Kubor, at least forced back into the base with minions inside there as well. Echo Fox still have three alive with just one for Cloud9. The TP is there and I think they might have done it walking right back in. Echo Fox is gonna go for the Nexus turrets and Echo Fox has such a rough start to this year, only two wins. But a win over Cloud9 would be just so impressive. Looking to do it right now as Kumo defends against the world. The second inhibitor falls though, GA about to be popped. And the respawn's just too long. It will be Echo Fox finally picking up a win with the new jungler. Down in kills, doesn't matter. Up in Nexus's Echo Fox win. And what a game it was. Balanced on a nice edge there for so, so long. Echo Fox and Cloud9 so evenly matched, but it is Echo Fox coming out on top. We've been struggling a lot this season, and it's kind of funny that two of our wins are versus the top teams. It's kind of weird, because we're like losing all these games that are that should be winnable, and then we're winning versus what should be very hard games. So the win versus C9 like, meant a lot to us, just since like this roster, that was our second week. The first week didn't go so well. So, just as like these five players, I think it meant a lot for us to get our first win. Good job, we guys. We did it. Guys. One win at a time. We let our revenge. Yeah, so guys, I think we did a better job. We did a better good job. And then we can do it, guys, right? <laughs> we are just keep looking, looking for just revenge the all of the other teams. <laughs> okay, how did you, you know what was the game? How did you kill Ezreal in the last fight? How did you get there? I fucking went in there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, watching. We were like, kind of, and also, you can see the last one. I was like, I need Apollo. Get him, man. Get him. You actually fucking went in one beach. Yeah, I was like, I was like, fuck this. Kill Ezreal. I actually had an assassin buff, and I just jumped in the last one. We're back and preparing for game four of the day, 100 Thieves versus Echo Fox. And for teams looking to battle out from the bottom of the standings, each squad exhibited great improvement, especially in the bottom lane. Meanwhile, on the side of Echo Fox, Haku also taking over the game on Yumi. Over 30k damage done yesterday. Uh, their bottom lane as well will be a nice matchup for the surging 100 Thieves duo. And we'll see which one can get the better of it today. When we played versus 100 Thieves, I think the early game was pretty good. Like, we were even, we got a kill or two off the dragon fight. I think so with the scoop on the Ryu, gonna force the flash. Mike with a point blank ulti. He's gonna stun up our main team, but now he's forced into stasis. Hako, though, looking to make those ultis sing. On to Afro, he goes. He needs to try and get out of there as Solo's also made his way back down. One for one so far. But Afro, we're gonna try and make it. Oh, one more again. This is what he wanted earlier, but Hako still getting out of there. Oh! Just everything! And stays alive. Hako with the fancy footwork on Pike. And due to Pike's passive, he can heal up half the damage as well. Hako, some pretty, pretty big plays for Echo Fox. There were a lot of ganks in the top lane like usual, and unfortunately Colin died to a couple of those. And then when we got to mid game, our team just kind of was unsure what to really do. And Colin was trying to create space and pressure in the bot lane. And when they would send three people or more to go down there and deal with him, our team really wasn't taking advantage of any of that, and instead we're just trying to like salvage and just go cover up his lane and all that kind of stuff. And you put this in this situation where we don't actually end up fighting them at all in the game. We don't have a team fight or anything, and we kind of just rolled over and died. They were just really 
proactive when they had opportunities and they got a lot off of their um, kind of like windows and we didn't really make any large uh, like advantages off of ours. And 100 Thieves is going to stream into the base and keep on picking up wins. They'll take down these Nexus turrets and slowly but surely they are moving themselves back into play of contention. Phoenix, a beautiful Azero, but it is too little, too late for Echo Fox. And that's been all 100 Thieves these last few games as Bang puts the finishing touches on the Nexus and Afro dances around the fountain. The post game meeting for the 100 Thieves game was just, you know, everyone was still like heated, and some people thought they were like being blamed for the loss, and some people were like bl kind of blaming others, including, the, but they were also blaming themselves. So I think it's most just like, you know, it's like right after the game, so everybody was still really emotional about it. You shouldn't have said, I, I don't feel like we're doing anything. I don't know. No, what. just you're not waiting over there. You're not waiting. I'm waiting for that game because, like, so like it says, Johnny Cons take this guy loses slash level five. So Johnny Cons takes my ulti, right? Cons pushes me off, and then I'm just waiting, waiting. So Johnny Cons again, loses my ulti again. We trade ulties, and then it's like, and then she just comes back when we think like we try to say she doesn't have ulti, and then she just comes back and ultis me. Like what? Like are we just supposed to? Sit, do should I just set up my tower? Is that like? Really what you're is that? Because I don't feel like we're at, like you can say like be patient, and I'll be patient if we have proactive play. No, but we're so not doing shit like, during the game. Wait, let me finish. We ain't doing shit during the game. And I'm the only one that's like, like I might be dying, but at least I'm like trying to do something. Like that's the way I see it. Yeah. I never thought I got too heated, but I mean, just, I mean, people want to win, and there's just like a lot of passion. Uh, and I mean, you put a lot of work into it. I feel like if you're just going week to week and not really like talking about anything serious, and you're just like losing, it feels like you're not really that invested. I would rather see a lot of like intense discussion and growth than just people being happy and just like avoiding any type of tension. Yeah, I like, in the game I asked, like when I was pathing down, like we can contest their ground for walls or I'm just gonna go down and we're gonna punish this Jinx with no flash. But then the next minute later, we can't do that. That's what I'm saying. Because we made a mistake. I so like, like, I was making these plans. No, but it's okay, but we can like make mistake, but the thing is, even if we make a warm mistake, the game is not just over. Yeah, I don't think every, anybody, nobody gave up. I didn't give up. I think it was good to have the meeting just to like get it out there and like not have to worry about it like over the weekend. Like everybody just like was saying what they felt and I think we came to a good conclusion. Whereas like it wasn't really anybody's fault, it was like us as a team didn't work together. So we're going to come in this week and make sure that's not the case. With our team, we saw early success and then we hit a bump in the road on the way to where we are now. And every team will get to this point at some point in time, especially when you make roster swaps. And like you've seen with other teams where they do have these bad splits, they always bounce back and they end up having uh, better success in the future. And it just happens to be the point right now where we, we need to try and figure out what our identity is as a team and then we're gonna come back stronger and we're gonna be able to be a much better team than we were before after going through this.